Hello, everyone. This is Alice Plaster from Prince George's County Memorial Library System. And I wanted to welcome you today to our program for Native American and Indigenous Peoples Month, which is November. So what I'm going to do today, um, we're going to be doing, I, I'm going to be doing a demonstration of the petroglyph rock art um, examples. So it's going to be in celebration of that month. Uh, now, what I wanted to tell you, I wanted to give you a little bit about the history of, of uh, petroglyphs with the, in the Native American community. So I'm going to be sharing my screen and we're going to find out a little bit more about this. All right, petroglyphs rock art. What are petroglyphs? They are images that have been scratched pecked, ground, incised, or stippled into rock. They may be found on large rocks, cliff sides, or boulders. Over time, the rock surface in desert environments has what is known as a desert varnish, which is like a thin coating of clay particles that have been deposited on rocks. When manganese is found, the thin coating or patina appears as a dark color. When iron oxides are present, the desert varnish appears red. When the rock surface is scratched, abraded, carved, pecked, incised, the underlying lighter rock is revealed. So uh, petroglyphs are the images and designs that result when the rock varnish layer is carved, scratched, pecked, stippled, chiseled or engraved by any of those uh, type of implements. Um, the exact tools used are thought to be stone versions of the hammer and chisel. What do petroglyphs mean? It is a matter of conjecture as to the intended meaning of the petroglyphs. Speculation as to the meanings include that they are of a religious or spiritual nature telling a story, marking a trail, or commemorating an event. The National Park Service estimates that there are over 25,000 images at the Petroglyph National Monument in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and more than 20 Native American pueblos and tribes. The date of creation could be relatively determined by looking at the subject matter. And, and its known existence or presence. Uh, for example, like the bow and arrow came into existence in the Southwest approximately AD 500. Uh, these designs have been created after AD 500. Images of a horse or horse and rider are thought to be created after the Spanish arrived in the area, AD 1540. So I'm gonna be covering a little bit more about the petroglyph or what they call petrograph rock art. Now the petrograph refers to the marks made by adding paint or other substances to the rock surface. Um, so the word pictograph is also sometimes used the same way, but is more correctly referred to picture writing in any medium. Rock art is a general term for all marks made on rock surfaces, whether or not they constitute art in the Western sense. There are images and designs painted on the rocks and caves. Different colors of paint were made from plants and minerals that were ground up and mixed with protein-based liquids such as egg, blood, or urine. They could be applied to the rock surface with sticks, brushes, fingers, or hands. So here is an example of, here is a human figure at McKee Springs, and that is in the Dinosaur National Monument. Uh, more information about this particular image uh, can be found at www.nps.org, which is the National Park Service. And a little comment is that the Dinosaur National Monument is located in northeastern Utah, bordering Nevada. Now, 
And here is another one. This one is also from the Key Springs and it's, it's showing the petroglyph. You know, you could see the design in the rock and the desert varnish or that coating that has deposited over the years. That's at the Dinosaur National Monument. Another example, you can see uh, how it looks like it's going to be like communicating, a, could be communicating a story or marking some type of uh, travels. It's, uh, it's kind of hard to decipher what this exactly means, but this is another example of the McKee Springs petroglyphs. This is another one at the Cub Creek petroglyphs. Now this one is uh, giving a like a dot pattern, like it's like stippled, what we would call uh, in the art world, like, like kind of stippling, making like uh, almost uh, kind of points, uh, pointillism. But this is of course using sharp objects. And this is at Pool Creek Petroglyph. This is Swelter Shelter Petroglyph number two. You can see that there are interesting figures that have been carved. And this one is described at Cub Creek Petroglyph as uh, the close-up of a flute player. So uh, you can imagine, the, you can see the flute with the, looks like the arms, uh, but the, some of the body seems to be perhaps missing, but uh, over the years, uh, it probably has eroded. And this is one uh, that is found in the Kanata Trail at the Petroglyph National Monument. This is in the Sloan Canyon, Nevada. And this image is from the Encyclopedia Britannica Image Quest, which is one of our library databases. So you can get a lot of uh, information from that source also. And just to give you some more examples uh, of the kind of interesting lines and, and uh, portrayal of different objects, this is another one. So you see that very dark background and the other kind of incised imagery in there. And that's also from the Encyclopedia Britannica Image Quest. This is <laughs> quite interesting. This is uh, the Indian petroglyphs drawn on red sandstone by scratching away the dark varnish of the iron oxides. That's at Newspaper Rock, Canyonlands, Utah, United States of America. Another example. So you can tell that there is, uh, have some animals in that look like some uh, hunting is going on there. And this is like a spiral imagery. This one depicts the symbol of women, everlasting or eternity. This is also from the Vernal, Utah and uh, image from Britannica. This is from the cliff dwellings of Mesa Verde, Colorado. Uh, the dwellings, houses built into cliff walls were built by the ancient Pueblo Indians, also known as the Anasazi in the 12th and 13th centuries. Now this is the Capitol Reef petroglyphs. Capitol Reef is home to towering sandstone structures and impressive canyons, but it also holds many ancient petroglyphs, which are engraved etchings into rock walls. Fremont and ancestral Puebloan people lived here between 600 and 13 AD, and their markings tell what appears to be their stories, hunting patterns, crop cycles, and mythologies of their lives. What they thought and what they exactly were communicating will never be known because there's really 
no actual translation available. And uh, that's uh, the part of the fun of actually seeing them imagining what the conversations of the ancients told of this colorful and rugged place. This is a very complimentary, that is the visual visitutah.com. Now in modern times, we um, can find that the symbols from the um, professional organizations uh, in the Department of Transportation will, um, the, the AIGA, the Professional Association for Design, they have uh, quite a few modern pictograms that are in use. And in more recent times, uh, the 2020 Toyota Olympics, Tokyo Olympics um, sports <laughs> pictograms uh, will also uh, uh, examples of that. And then and with our phones, we have our emoji and pictographs. And you can find more information at that uh, website there. Okay, now I wanted to show you a little bit about Native American symbols. So this is uh, what we have here. And you can find this uh, imagery on different databases, websites. So there's different meaning to the different ones. It's just another And uh, okay, that's also an example of some imagery. So resources that we have at the library system, you can check out the American Mosaic, the American Indian Experience, American History, and the Daily Life Through History, as well as uh, the Encyclopedia Britannica, as well as our master file. And we have so many different creative resources through our support suite which is a creative suite. Okay. All right, now, what I wanted to start and show you, what I started off the program with is this is an example of, of what, what we can do with our petroglyphs today. All right, that's an example of one of them. That is uh, considered the heart line that this symbol does represent the balance between Native Americans believed in the striking balance, peace, and harmony among all humans, animals, and plant life. So that is um, my example of that. And um, when we're working today, first of all, I wanted to start out with what, what we are using to do this. First of all, you have to have a structure that you're going to be doing your little walk art panel. What I have here are examples. You can use mat board. And chipboard and various types of, of structures that you will be starting with. Then um, what we're doing is we're going to be spraying, spraying the surface using the Elmer's, Elmer's spray adhesive, and then, then putting our sand uh, items on product on top of this to, to create our surface because we want to have a, a more of a rock, rock texture. So then we can then carve into it. So let me go ahead and uh, show you what I think would be very helpful for you to have when you're doing this. Always, it's, it's good to have some tape, some sharp sharpies, as well as uh, some pencils to be working with because you would like to sketch your items out. And then um, scissors and collection of what sand you would like to use. Today, I would like to use this um, brown sand for a background. Now, the other one was like the dark black that I had used on this one. So what I'm going to do first is these over. And we're going to start out, this is with uh, one of the, this is a chipboard, piece of chipboard that I have. 
So I'm going to just go ahead and place that in. Uh, I find it handy to have one of these, um, I'd say either a box top or something like this, so you can do, so you can do uh, your your spraying and have it a little bit more controlled. So I'm going to put a little tape underneath that. Always take up the blue uh, or anything that's in a, in a container like that so you can get some good you know, coverage on this. All right. And then you just go ahead and then spray and get like a good coating of that. And then what I'm going to do is just go ahead and take my sand and then just dump it all over this. Uh, underneath, it's always good to have a paper so you can later catch all that sand and put it back into your cups. The plastic cups are always a handy thing. So this is the process that I had done with this, that previous little rock board that you had seen. Okay, so what, what we're gonna do now is I wanna show you a little bit about the process of how you can go from doing this and, what, and getting some ideas of what you're going to use. Now, um, like looking to all those symbols that you, you know, find, like I was describing, or you can, you know, design your own image or something that is important to you that would be very unique for yourself. And then when you're getting ideas, you can look at different, different magazines or you know, different images, sometimes like little um, coloring um, items, coloring books, you might get an idea of something. But um, it's always important to, to think of, of what your symbol is going to be and represent. So um, with the Native Americans, they had a, a variety of different symbols that made a lot of significance to them. Uh, there are images where it would represent, uh, for example, hope. Hope uh, is, is one of them. And they will have butterflies and various things will actually be um, very significant. So let's go to what I wanted to do today is that I have one that I was going to be doing as an example. And this is, this is the imagery of sisters. And you can see it's very symmetrical. Uh, there is some uh, sharp edges as well as the circular pattern, but it's very symmetrical. And the line connecting both of the images, meaning the bond between the two sisters. And uh, actually the two brothers is very, very similar. But uh, so that, is, and it represents, that line represents equality. So I, what I did was I, first of all, start with your pencil and, and some paper, and then I kind of sketched up the imagery. Now, when you're doing this, uh, you know, have your pencil eraser and, and just work, work up to what size you would like something. I particularly wanted to do the sisters because I have a strong bond with my sister. And uh, that's why I chose that one. I also did a little preliminary drawing to, to figure out the uh, sketching. And the next step is inking. So inking, you can use your Sharpies. And I did that just to strengthen, strengthen the line so you can 
get the image uh, the way you want it. And, and then I did actually photocopy it because I wanted to make sure to have a couple copies uh, just in, in the process. So I coded, this is, I was using a very deep blue for this particular creation or simulating the rock surface. And what I'm going to be using to do, to do the actual carving into the structure, you, you need to have something uh, like a paper clip, a nail, or I find what's very handy is a file, like a fingernail file. So that's what I have found to be very useful. It, this uh, paper clip also helps in gouging into there. Uh, other things you might want to have handy with you are paper towels and other things in case the sand um, you know gets on your fingers and everything. So that's good. So what I'm going to do now is take, give you a, um, a demonstration of how this is going to work. So I go ahead and, and that's all, the reason to have a good uh, like multiple copies is that when you're working into this, you want to you know, have a record of what you designed in the first place in case you want to do a multiple one. You could do a series of different images conveying a story as, as was um, spoken about in regard to why, why the um, Native Americans did do this. They were either uh, marking a, a trail or telling a story. Now that original surface, that, like the blue surface that I'm working with right now, if, um, if when you use your spray and, and then uh, have the sand drift down off of it, if it doesn't look strong enough, you can always respray and then get a good coating. So you might have to do that a little bit. So this can take some little digging here. Because since, yeah, it's not our original drawing. So just to let you know, you just get like a little faint, faint area there. So this requires a little bit more work. Let me dig in here a little bit. <laughs> And the, the different colors used uh, in, in the different tribes could mean different, different things. So you can't um, say that one color definitively meant something else, but you know, a certain thing. The um, turquoise color is, has been used quite a bit because turquoise in itself was um, something that was very available at the time to, to do their jewelry. And that was also in the, the work. Okay. I'm making a little more progress on that. So let me go try the, let me get our little uh, paper clip. It's a little gouging going on. Scrape, scrape away. And so if you have any other tools that you can think of as far as scraping or kind of doing a little bit of sharp pointed items, that's what you need. It uh, does take some working and it's good if you have um, a strong structure underneath. 
do this. So you certainly get the idea of the of the uh, of uh, the resistance on the the sand. <laughs> All right, I'm getting a little bit more. So it's a, it's it's a matter of keeping to to chisel away and, and keep going with your sharp items, and uh, so you can really make um, a pattern of different ones with the different um, types of sand. So that is something that uh, you can can think about and then do your own do your own image and, and kind of work with that too. figure out what maybe is your favorite color and then why is that? There. Okay, so uh, I wanted to uh, thank you for, for visiting with us today and um, just check out some of our resources at uh, Prince George's County Memorial Library System. And uh, we'd like to, to um, share as much information and get some more creative programs going on. So thank you for staying with me and um, celebrating National um, Indigenous Peoples Month, Native American. Thank you so much.